Hello. I'm dressed as Mr. Ben, and there's a reason for that. Come on. Usually at this time of year, I'm busy in the theatre acting, wearing costumes, playing all sorts of different roles. But this year all the theatres are closed, so instead I thought we could read a story about somebody else who likes costumes, Mr Ben. Mr Ben is written by David McKee. He also wrote Elmer the Patchwork Elephant and uh, King Rollo, and a great story called Not Now Bernard, which you should read if you've not read it already. Um, but Mr. Ben is my favourite, and this is the first ever Mr. Ben adventure, so um, it's a good one. Let's crack straight on, shall we? It was Sunday morning in Festive Road. Men were unloading their vans. Boys were playing with wooden swords. Everything was ordinary. At number 52, the postman arrived with a letter for Mr. Ben. It was an invitation to a fancy dress party. Mr Ben wasn't very fond of parties, but he did like fancy dress. So off he went in search of something special to wear. He tried the big shops, but he couldn't find anything. He tried the not so big shops. He tried the small shops, but he couldn't find fancy dress anywhere only ordinary everyday clothes. At last, in a back lane, he found a little shop with all sorts of interesting things to wear. In the window was a suit of bright red armour. Just the ticket, thought Mr Ben. So he went inside. As if by magic, the shopkeeper appeared. Can I help you, sir? he asked. I wonder if I might borrow that suit of red armour. Of course, replied the shopkeeper. Try it on, and he pointed to the changing room. Quickly, Mr Ben put on the armour. He laughed at the red knight reflected in the mirror. Then he noticed another door. Well, I never, he said, and he walked through the second doorway. On the other side, Mr Ben found himself in rocky countryside. He looked around and spotted smoke rising from behind a large pile of rocks. He felt brave in his red armour, so he climbed up the rocks to see what was making the smoke. Down below he saw quite a large dragon, breathing out clouds of smoke. It's somebody else in fancy dress, he thought. So he called down. Hello, that's a good outfit. How'd you make the smoke? The dragon looked up at him and said, you can't fool me. You've been sent to kill me. Kill him, thought Mr Ben. He really is a dragon, but a very sad dragon. Before long, Mr Ben was sitting down beside the dragon, and the dragon told him his story. He used to live happily in a castle. Everybody loved him, especially the king, and he worked hard lighting all the fires. But one day, a man came with a new idea for lighting fires. He had matches. Now, nobody wanted matches because they liked the dragon to light their fires. And the matchmaker was cross about that. So he set fire to a barn or two and blamed the dragon. When the king's favourite white horse ran away, the dragon was told that that was his fault too. The poor dragon couldn't do anything right. So he left the castle in shame and now everybody had to buy the matchmaker's matches. The dragon looked crestfallen and pointed to the horse. I've been looking after him, but I'm much too afraid to return him. I'll help you, said Mr Ben. Show me where the castle is, and I'll tell the king the true story. The dragon was delighted, and they set off for the castle straight away. They walked and walked, but the nearer they got, the slower the dragon went. Then, when they saw the castle in the distance, 
the dragon stopped completely. He was too afraid to go any closer. I'll just wait here under the trees until you return, he said. Seeing how nervous the dragon was, Mr. Ben said goodbye, and he rode off towards the castle on the fine white horse. When the guards saw Mr. Ben, they rushed to tell the king that the dragon must have been killed because a brave red knight was riding up to the castle on his white horse. They took him straight to the king for his reward. The king listened while Mr. Ben told him the dragon's sad story. The king was so happy because he'd missed the dragon and was delighted to hear the truth. Nobody liked the nasty matchmaker. He'd been cheating all the people by making his matches more and more expensive because he knew that people had to have them. Bring the matchmaker here, said the king. The people booed and hissed as the miserable matchmaker was brought before him. I order you to go to prison, he thundered, and the guards took him to the deepest, darkest dungeon, while the king decided how to punish the rascal. Now take me to the dragon, said the king. Mr. Ben led the king and his guards to welcome back the dragon. Just before they reached the dragon's hiding place, the procession stopped because they didn't want to frighten him. The king and Mr. Ben got off their horses and walked to the trees where the dragon was crouching. The king was happy to see the dragon again and told him how sorry he was for his troubles. The dragon was so overjoyed that he made the king and Mr. Ben ride on his back. And with the dragon leading the way in triumph and the guard following cheering behind, they made their joyful way back to the castle. Everybody came to welcome back the dragon. The king made a speech and explained how the matchmaker was the troublemaker, not the dragon. And as punishment, the matchmaker would have to make as many matches as the people needed for nothing. And from now on, the dragon would be the king's personal firelighter. Everyone cheered and clapped. Then the king thanked Mr. Ben and said that to celebrate, there would be a magnificent feast. And Mr. Ben would be the guest of honour. Preparations started and everyone set to to make the finest feast ever. But while everyone was rushing to and fro with puddings and cakes and pies and tureens, Mr. Ben just stood at the side and watched. Suddenly, a little man appeared. He looked familiar and Mr. Ben wondered where he'd seen him before. Would you like to change before the feast, sir? He asked. You'll find the other clothes in here. And he showed Mr. Ben to the changing room of the shop. Oh, now I remember, said Mr. Ben, as he took a last look at himself in the mirror. Slowly, he took off the helmet, the gloves, and the fine suit of red armour, and put on his usual clothes. I've had too much excitement for one day to go to the fancy dress party now, said Mr. Ben, as he gave back the armour. I won't take it after all. Right you are, sir, smiled the little man. Shall we be seeing you again? Oh yes, said Mr. Ben. I'll be back soon. Mr. Ben walked home, thinking about his adventure. As he put his hand into the pocket for his keys, he found a very unusual box of matches. He smiled at the picture on the box. How nice, he thought. I'll keep it very carefully, just to remind me. Bye-bye. Thank you.